I posted a video where I showed you all of my studio lighting setups and I talked briefly about each one with the promise of doing more in-depth videos of each lighting type. I've already done the detailed video for speed lights and now I'm moving on to continuous fluorescent lighting. I have two sizes of lights, one larger, one smaller. I'll be talking about both of them in this video. First, let me show you them and give you some technical details of the lights and then I'll share with you some examples of what I've come up with using them. The larger lights are Linco Flora light heads. I have four of them. I have a soft box for each one, like this one. This one has the soft box's frame on it, but I've left off the white filter that goes on the front so that it can act as a reflector. I also have a grid that affixes to the soft box with Velcro. I have a few regular light stands and one boom stand. Also, two of the light heads are remote light heads. Let me show you. I have a remote that I can turn the lights on or off with. The Floras have a somewhat variable output. They each have six light bulbs. They have two switches so that you can have half power or full power. And two of those light heads even have remotes, so you can turn them on and off from across the room. This is especially helpful with the boom light because it's kind of hard to reach the controls when it's up high or hovering over something. I also have these two smaller light heads. They have only one light bulb each, which is either on or off. There's no variability. The light heads are Brytec brand. Then they each have a Linco Morning Glory convertible softbox on them. Now, because they're convertible, I can have them in the softbox configuration. I can take the white filter off and have it act as a reflector, or I can cinch it down to be a snoot. Let's talk about some of the benefits and drawbacks of continuous fluorescent lighting. Because these are continuous light, you can visualize the outcome of your shot before pressing the shutter release button. The light is always on, so you can see where the light is pointed, how much light is falling on the subject, and where on the subject is illuminated. You don't have to go back and forth to your shooting position in the camera to take a photo, triggering the lights to then review what you have. In addition, these lights have minimal output flexibility, which I'll talk more about in a minute, but that can be a benefit. They make your setup process less complicated. This would be a benefit if you are just starting out and are getting a handle on lighting, or if you just don't like a complicated setup. You can use the camera's exposure modes because the light isn't going to change when you press the shutter release button. When you're using strobes, the camera has already metered by the time the shutter release is pressed and the strobes fire. Using continuous light, the camera can meter for you to obtain the correct exposure in the different exposure modes because the light remains constant. This is another thing that makes continuous light great for people just getting started in photography who are maybe not quite comfortable with using fully manual mode on their camera yet, or again, people like me who simply like to make use of their camera's power and keep things simple. On a related note, with continuous light, you can use shutter speed to affect exposure while maintaining aperture. In other words, you can use aperture priority, where you choose the aperture and the camera determines the shutter speed. With strobes, you don't get to change your shutter speed because the flash of light is so fast. That effectively becomes your shutter speed. With continuous light, you have the opportunity to choose an aperture that will give you a certain depth of field, then change your shutter speed and ISO to obtain the exposure you're looking for. Another thing these are good for is for shooting video. Again, because they're continuous. I use mine in almost every video I make, including this one. Fluorescent continuous lights aren't too expensive compared to other studio lights. However, you don't typically get as much light per dollar as you get with strobes. In other words, with strobes, you'll probably spend more, but you'll get a more powerful light. Up to now, I've talked about the benefits of continuous lights, but let's talk about something that is specific to fluorescent lighting. Studio lighting, particularly continuous lighting, can get very hot. Fluorescent lighting, however, does not run hot. The larger lights warm up a little bit, but not very much. This is important because hot lights are uncomfortable for your subject, which is unfortunate for two reasons. One, the discomfort of the subject is going to show through in your photos. Two, when you're hot, you sweat, and no one wants a sweaty subject. And continuous lights that are cool are great for working with babies. No flash to scare them or wake them up and no excessive heat. Now, the floras are pretty large and not so easy to transport because of the six large and delicate fluorescent bulbs that have to be taken out to remove the soft box. I do have a bag which holds six of them, plus a bag which holds the light heads and soft boxes. And the soft boxes collapse down pretty easily, so I can transport these, but I'm not typically going to risk breakage by bringing them. However, because the smaller set of lights is so compact and flexible, they're really great for on-location shooting. You can remove the single bulb from each light and transport it, and maybe even an extra or two in that same bulb bag, or I've actually simply cinched down the Morning Glory convertible softbox to act as a protector. Then I can lay them in the back of my car, and I don't have to worry too much about them. And as long as you don't need a ton of light, 
they you know only have one bulb after all you can create a whole bunch of different looks with minimal equipment and they're fairly easy to transport here's a photo where i brought these to a hotel shoot they were good because they were small enough to be mobile in the hotel room and because i was able to transport them easily one last benefit of these i want to mention won't apply to all lights but i want to talk about each of the two different soft boxes that i have let's start with the soft boxes i have on the larger flora lights i mentioned that they collapse down for travel or storage i like that a lot Another good thing is that I can have this white cover affixed to get that nice soft box light, but I can also take it off and use it like a reflector. I get a harsher light that way. Of course, I always have the grid that I can affix easily, which I like as well. Now for the morning glory convertible soft boxes. They are super flexible. You can quickly and easily change the entire look of your photo. On to the drawbacks. Well, they aren't so much drawbacks. Let's call them not benefits. I already talked about how the Floras aren't as portable as some of the other setups, so I won't go into that anymore. Let's talk a little more about these bulbs though. They are daylight balanced fluorescent bulbs. We need to discuss white balance here. Fluorescent lighting can be challenging to match, but you have several options. Many cameras have a fluorescent white balance setting, and some even have a specific daylight balanced fluorescent setting. For me, I adjusted that setting in the fine tuning and got good results or some cameras have a Kelvin option where you enter the Kelvin number of the bulb and the white balance adjusts itself from there. I still had to fine tune when I used this option or many cameras have a preset white balance option, which you can set using a gray card or other neutral gray object. You put that object into the studio under the lights where your subject would be and your camera can set white balance from that. Whatever you choose though, you'll probably need to do some experimenting to find the right balance. As a side note, I even added daylight balanced fluorescent bulbs to the lighting fixture over my studio area for a little bit of extra light. That way, when I do need that little bit of extra light, I'm not in a mixed lighting situation. Now, in my studio lighting overview video, I showed you some examples of using my fluorescent continuous lights in the studio. I do want to quickly go over those again with you and talk a little bit more about certain aspects of the setups, but then I'll show you some new photos I took where I used the lights outside of the studio. I'll talk about why they were so good for that particular shoot. To begin, I used the floras in this photo to get a traditional portrait. The soft boxes on them give me soft lighting and I can have one set of lights on full power and the other one on half power to maintain some shadow for dimension. When I use one light and add the grid to one of the floras, I can direct the light for a super low key look. But because the flora is fairly large, I can light a large portion of my subject. Using one of the morning glories in the snoot configuration, I can also direct light. Because these lights are smaller, a smaller portion of the subject gets illuminated, which worked well for these tattoo shots. Again with the morning glories, I can use one to direct light onto the subject and another to direct light onto the backdrop for a different effect. In my video on speed lights, I showed you how to blow out the background using speed lights directed at the backdrop. You won't be able to get that same kind of a look because these lights are just not as powerful powerful as speed lights. Going the other way entirely, I like to use a flora on the boom light stand along with two floras on regular stands to do product photography because I can create an effect similar to a light tent where there's lots of light coming in from all directions. Now let's get into the new on location photos. I took the two smaller fluorescent lights with the morning glory convertible soft boxes into my bathroom where I hopped into the bathtub. I chose the morning glories because they're compact and I could move them around in the small space that is my bathroom to get the light where I wanted it. And I was able to utilize the range of the convertible soft boxes to get different effects. I would not have been able to do that with larger lights. In addition, since these don't get hot, they didn't heat up the small space. So fluorescent continuous lights. They can be a bit delicate, so you have to take care when transporting them. You will need to adjust your white balance when using them. They're versatile, they run pretty cool, and they're relatively inexpensive. I use them in the studio and on location for still photography often, and I use them even more often for video. Head over to snapchick.com to see one of the new bathtub shots along with some camera settings. Plus VIPs, make sure you log in when you're there to see the entire gallery of bathtub photos, plus a video where I give you additional technical details and talk about inspiration and challenges. And as always, let me know if you have any questions.